as a YouTuber with a vaguely successful channel, I do get a lot of comments. 99% of those comments are excellent, and I really enjoy reading them. But there is a percentage of comments that I have to ignore and just move on. But this one comment has really frustrated me. And it's not even a negative comment. I don't think it was meant with any malice or any ill intent. I'll put it up on the screen now. So you may know that my whole ethos about reef keeping is to do with trying new things, keeping macroalgae, keeping uh, mollies and stuff like that. Stuff you wouldn't normally see in your traditional reef tank. The reason I do that is because it's something different. Everybody keeps corals and everybody keeps traditional reef fish in a marine tank. And this comment, although it wasn't meant in a hurtful manner, has really dug deep into my psyche. And I just need to explain to this person or, you know, to the wider audience. The ocean is a very big place. Everybody knows that the reef system is actually a re relatively small part of what makes up the entire ocean. Now, when people keep a saltwater tank, everybody just immediately goes to something that looks like the Great Barrier Reef. So those of you who have visited a good public aquarium may have noticed that the saltwater tanks in these aquariums aren't all the same. It's not just 50 saltwater reef tanks in these places. They tend to have a good variation of different tanks and different ecosystems. The ocean is not just the Great Barrier Reef. You have great kelp fields, you have rock pools, you have the pelagic ocean, which is just fish and very little else. There's so much different biotopes in the ocean and the coastal environment, for instance. I think everybody in this hobby has just got stuck on the fact that all you do in a reef tank is keep corals and fish and anything else is just weird. And it's a real shame because I think we need to explore the ocean more in our tanks. There's loads of people doing this. I've seen so many people nowadays setting up rock pool aquariums, especially native British ones, uh, and obviously macroalgae. There's vast fields of seagrass in the ocean. Okay, this isn't seagrass, but it's as close as I'm gonna get to seagrass in the UK. And you can kind of replicate that environment using stuff like macroalgae, especially this Calerpa prolifera. You know, loads and loads of seagrass beds, but nobody keeps seagrass beds in their aquariums, or very few people, the seahorse keepers, for instance, may do. But why does this guy think that if I want to keep macroalgae, I should just keep freshwater plants? Now that's a completely different environment. I want to keep macroalgae because it's different and it's a challenge. Macroalgae is very hard to keep. It's not the easiest thing. Okay, there are some species that are. Calerpa is really easy. Ulva, like this one down here. Cheeto, yeah, okay, easy, no problem. But when you want to make a nice biotope or something that resembles a biotope for macroalgae, it's not easy and it's pushing the boundaries. And that's the same thing with mollies. Now mollies, we keep them in fresh water traditionally, especially these salfin mollies. But actually, I've researched into their natural habitat and they're just as much of a saltwater fish as they are a freshwater fish. They range from rivers, they range to estuaries, they range all the way out into the ocean for whatever reason to breed or to just graze on macroalgae and microalgae. But they love salt water. Now why is it strange and why should I change my ethos of fish keeping to keep these in freshwater? It's a wonderful thing to put these into the saltwater habitat. And I find that they actually do a lot better in salt water than they do in fresh water. They get far fewer diseases. They get far fewer health issues in salt water than they do in fresh water. So, you know, maybe they go out into the ocean to rid themselves of parasites. That could be something that they do, but they love it. And no, I won't just keep a freshwater tank to keep freshwater plants and mollies. The reason I do it is it's a challenge. It's different. What's the point of keeping fish if you're just going to do the same thing as everybody else? Should be something that you enjoy, something that you challenge yourself with as well. And that's why I keep macroalgae. If I wanted to keep a 30 litre tank with guppies in, I would do that and there's nothing wrong with that, but it doesn't excite me and it doesn't challenge me and that's why. 
I think that the guy's comment wasn't with malice, but also I think it's very narrow-minded just to say that certain things can only be done in a certain way. If you want to keep plant-like things in an aquarium, you should be limited only to a freshwater tank. Um, so that's kind of the end of the rant, but I've got one more thing for you. For those 30% of viewers that normally get this far in one of my videos, here's a little treat for you. We're gonna do a sneaky peek update on this 30 litre nano aquarium, salt water, believe it or not, because yet again, I'm trying new things. We've got our Manado fresh water substrate in here. We've got our lava rock, which is doing a lot better in this little tank than it was doing in my fluval shaker, possibly indicating that it's not the lava rock, it's the system that has the problem. So interesting there. Now I did add some Calerpa prolifera to this tank and you might notice it has gone. And that's because it went sexual almost immediately from putting it into this system. I don't know why. It went from this tank to this tank, same water, but I guess maybe the light change triggered it. It's very sensitive to change, Calerpa prolifera. So that's why it's missing. But other than that, I've added some new things. We've got some little polyps in here as well. I did a hermit just to grub around and I replaced the Clerpa prolifera with Clerpa taxifolia. This was a little bit that fell off my main mother plant and it's already sending up new sprouts and leaves. So hopefully this one won't go sexual. We've got the Botrocladia still in there. It's obviously not done very much, but the blue octodes has done a tremendous spurt of growth and it's gone amazingly blue, hasn't it? That is all down to this light, because as we all know by now, Octodes likes blue light, and you can see the growth already from the last week it was in here, and also the fluorescent change is amazing. I also had some Gracilaria hayi in another tank, the Fluval uh, 1, 2, 3. I've broken that down, and this was in there. I didn't even know it was in there, just hiding amongst my rock work so that's a nice find a nice chunk of gracilaria hay obviously it's right at the back there doesn't like too much light so hopefully that will grow out and the gracilaria mammillaris on this bit of rock here is starting to grow as i predicted and hoped so fortunately other than the clerpa prolifera everything's going really well we haven't had any sort of cycle in this nano tank yet and I predicted that as well because these bits of rock that I put in there were very mature. Obviously they were out of this sump and then they were out of the back of this tank. They have matured really well and there's no real cycle. There might be a little bit of brown algae appearing on this rock work, but I don't think it's gonna last for very long. I think we're gonna skip the cycle in this tank. You can see the little critters on the rock work there, two brittle stars. Actually, there's a third one there. So that's good. I was hoping to cultivate these guys to put into the rest of my systems because they're very good little critters. And I did add a yellow goby, but he has decided to hide behind the rock because he knows I'm filming. So thank you for watching, you 10% of people that make it to the end of my videos. You're the special ones and thank you so much for getting here. If you have liked the video, please leave a like and also subscribe to my channel if you're not already. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.